Welcome to Successful Meetings in English. In this lesson, we will look at the language necessary for a facilitator to start a meeting. Hello. Our first eight lessons are to provide tips and useful language for facilitators of meetings. So if you are a facilitator, this should be very helpful to run a smooth and successful meeting. Even if you're not a facilitator, this will be very helpful to help you understand the role of a facilitator. OK, so let's start. There are four parts to starting a meeting. The first part is to welcome the participants. Secondly, to check the room, perhaps for any special seating arrangements or any special rules for the meeting. Thirdly, to confirm the purpose of the meeting. And finally, to focus on the agenda. We will look at each of these in turn. It's really important uh, to welcome everybody at the start of a meeting, but some people uh, might forget uh, this welcome and uh, not create a really good atmosphere. How you welcome participants to a meeting depends to a large extent on the size and the formality of a meeting. But here are some useful ways that you might wish to use. Good morning. It's great to see you all here. Good afternoon. Thank you for coming in for the meeting. Good evening. Thank you for coming. I know it's very last minute and not the most convenient time for you. Right, let's get started. One important point is how to get people's attention at the beginning when probably people are talking to each other. Again, this depends to some extent on each context. Some organisations use a bell or some kind of device. Others just begin and hope that colleagues will stop talking. Others signal in some way. Thank you. Can I have your attention, please? And then wait for silence. It's not an easy task, but it is important to start with everybody's attention focused on the facilitator. The second stage after the welcome is to check the room and any rules you might have for the meeting. It's always important to check that people can see the screen well and to hear each other. Here are some typical phrases that you might use for this. Can you all hear me OK? Can you see the screen well? Shall we turn the light off? It would be great if you could sit in pairs or small groups. We will have some discussion time during the meeting. Could you move a bit closer to the front? We expect a full house today. An important point to check is if there are any rules that will help the meeting run smoothly, such as asking everyone to turn off their devices and to listen to each other well and respond positively. Next, it's important to make the purpose of the meeting clear. How can we achieve this? Well, let's look at some useful phrases. First of all, we'll start with brainstorming. Today's purpose is to brainstorm new products for next year. We are meeting today to get as many new ideas as possible. Don't be afraid of speaking up. Feel free to generate as many ideas as possible. There are no bad ideas. Even very strange thoughts can be very helpful. A second purpose for meetings is to disseminate information. And here are a few useful ways that you can do this. Today's purpose is to let you know the new marketing strategy. Today's purpose is to confirm the details of the school's open day. If you do not have a lot of time or you want to make sure to deliver the information without any interruption, you could say, there will be a presentation first, so please hold your questions until after the presentation. Or if you have a small informal group and time is not that big a factor, you can invite questions. It's just a small group today, so if you have any comments or questions, please raise your hand at any time. Thank you. Our third purpose is to reach agreement and make a decision. Uh, it's really important that the process of making the decision is made clear at the beginning of the meeting, uh, whether it's uh, by voting uh, or by some other method. Often it's very obvious to the facilitator 
how agreement and a decision is reached, but it may not be obvious to the participants. Examples of useful language include We need to finally decide whether we should purchase Eastern Holiday to expand our business. After the discussion, we will vote to reach agreement. A simple majority is enough for a decision. There's more information about how to make a decision in Lesson 5. The final point when starting a meeting is to introduce the agenda. It's very important to go over the agenda briefly so that people know what to expect and what to achieve by the end of the meeting. Here is some useful language to show the expectations of the meeting based on the agenda. We have five points to cover in our agenda today. We will start with a briefing from each section and then move on to the budgeting. We have a long list of things to discuss today, so I want to keep each point short. Also, at this point, some facilitators will point out the time limits on the meeting. Some organisations have very strict policies on how long meetings should last, whilst others are less restricted and more open-ended. Our feeling is that a time limit can help focus the purpose and direction of a meeting. For example, let's limit the discussion to 30 minutes. We will have two minutes for each proposal. In this lesson, we have learned about the ways a facilitator can start a meeting so that it will be most effective. Think about recent meetings you have been to or ones you're going to soon. How were the meetings started? Were you welcomed? Did the facilitator check the room and the rules? Were the purpose and an agenda clarified? See if you can observe these points when you attend a meeting. And if you're a facilitator, keep practicing these points and try to communicate them clearly. You can use the downloadable checklist. Good luck!